Hello there, I'm John and today Shopkeep Arty are zooming live to the Philippines where we'll be joining professional artist Iris Babao Oi to paint a floral still life using watercolours and soft pastels. Can't wait. Uh, so join me as we fly there now. So these patron special events are designed to give you a boost of creative inspiration with leading artists from around the world. If you want to find out more about Iris or see reference photos or the recommended materials required to paint along, simply visit our website. I think I can see Iris down there. Yep, there she is. Hello, Iris. Hi. Hello to everyone. It's nice Hello. to be back. Yeah, it's great to be back with you. How how is everything in the Philippines at the moment? Have you are you now getting out of lockdown and getting back to normal? Well, unfortunately, not yet. But uh, things are trying are starting to ease up a bit. So yeah, businesses are slowly trying to uh, we're getting back to that. Uh, but people are still very careful. Um, it's really raining hard now. So I was actually a bit worried about the internet connection earlier. But thankfully, it's it's okay. Well, fingers crossed, and hopefully, yeah. <laughs> we'll get on with it quickly so that we can just in case the Wi-Fi goes down. Well, I can't wait to get started. But obviously, before I do, a quick thirty-second word on how these special patron shows work. So, first of all, with regards to this class, um, Iris is actually going to be talking about how you can mix pastel and watercolor and different techniques for doing that with on. Uh, watercolour paper. So she's going to spend quite a bit of time doing that. In fact, Iris, just for those of you that are at home and wanting to paint along, Iris has in fact actually already sketched out the flower scene that was sent to you as a reference photo and she's done the first layer of watercolour uh, paint. So if I just show you a quick little zoom of that. So there you go. So that's what Iris has already done. So what we're going to actually do for this first half is we're actually going to be talking about the different techniques that you can use in mixing watercolour and pastel. Then uh, in the, the middle section we're actually then going to talk about some of her previous examples of paintings, maybe where she's done that mixed media before, or some other scenes that relate to her upcoming workshop that's happening in a couple of weeks time. And we'll talk to her about that as well. Then in the last part of the show, the second half, we'll complete the art tutorial. And this will be where Iris uses that underpainting. And hopefully if you're painting at home, you can kind of do that in the first half, kind of sketch out and do an underpainting. And then what we'll be doing is adding the pastel and, and Iris will be showing you how to add pastel to that underpainting and, and enhancing the overall picture. So hopefully that will, uh, that makes sense to you. So <laughs> without further ado, let's get back to Iris and we'll make a start finding out about all the different techniques that you can use in mixing these two amazing media. So how and why do you combine watercolour and pastel, I guess is a good place to start. Oh, okay. Well, actually, the reason why I started doing this was um, I had a, a stack of watercolour sheets that expired. So, you know, art materials can be very expensive and I wanted to find a way to still use those uh, sheets. Um, but when I did watercolour with it, of course, because the sizing wasn't there anymore, it just... Uh, just seeped in all of the paint and you wouldn't really be able to work much with it. So um, I was trying to think of a way to cover all of those of those marks. Um, and then I thought, why not soft pastel? Because soft pastel and watercolor are two of the mediums that I really love to work with. Watercolor because it's, it, it's very translucent. It's a very challenging medium. It's a very transparent. And I love it for, for the spontaneity of it. You know, um, you cannot control where, where the paint goes. And I, that's what I love about watercolor. Now, what I love about soft pastel, on the other hand, is that it can be very vibrant. It can give uh, depth to your paintings, uh, such volume. Um, it can also do um, dreamy effects. But um, the things that you see with watercolor, you know, the techniques that you, that you do with it cannot be done with pastel. And the things you do with soft pastel cannot be done in in watercolor. So I was, you know, just trying to find a way to use both mediums and and get to a point where I'm happy with a painting that um, has those traits from the two mediums that I like. 
So yeah. when I did, when I started to do this, I, I I really enjoyed it, and that's what I actually want to share with everyone today. Brilliant, brilliant. So mm -hmm. I think what would be good, so if, for those of you at home that are wanting to paint along and maybe you've got the pastels out and the watercolours, what I'm going to do now before we move the camera, because we're going to bring the camera that's currently on the um, the painting here, we're going to move it so that it's on the different materials that Iris is going to be going through. So if you want to take a screenshot of this picture now, and then you can have that screenshot up and during this first half, you can be listening into what Iris is talking about, but you can also maybe pre-sketch out or pre-do this painting so that you're ready for after the, uh, the the midway of this tutorial. So hopefully that makes sense. So Iris, if you want to, uh, hopefully you've done that now. You've got a five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> okay. Um, so now if you want to move that to your uh, materials, yeah, that you've got, brilliant. And then we can, maybe you can have a conversation about what you've got in front of you there. There we go. There you go. Okay, so these are the me mediums that I use. Um, there's so much uh, pastel paper in the market. Uh, some of them are toned. Some of them don't have color. Some do have color. Um, so my difficulty when I was when I was doing this at first, because I wanted to do watercolor under painting, my difficulty was that the, the sanded papers had color already. So I thought, okay, maybe I'll just use watercolor sheets instead. Now, the thing with that is that it doesn't have the right amount of grit for soft pastel. So I experimented with different types of papers and different types of um, uh, mediums to go with it. And I came across uh, these uh, clear texture gesso by Montmartre. And the, the nice thing about it is that it's clear. So um, you can put it on uh, an existing watercolor painting that you have, and then further enhance it with soft pastels. And you'll, you'll have both the beauty of the watercolor and also the beauty of the pastel. So that, that's one way to go about it. And then I also found this uh, clear gesso from Liquitex, which is also good. I'll show you some different, uh, you know, how, how I applied it. And then I also found this pastel ground. Now the pastel ground is uh, not transparent, however, it has um, a bit of a brownish tint to it. So if you want your work to uh, have that translucent uh, effect of watercolor with a white paper, then this is something that you can't use, but it, it goes nicely if, you, if you're really going to cover the background. Uh, this is what we actually use. This is what I use for the coming class, for the class that we'll be doing. So um, I just wanted to show you now, Iris, when you were giving your introduction and you were saying that you wanted to find something because you had lots of watercolour paper that mm -hmm. was expiring, uh, mm -hmm. Eunice said that she's never heard of watercolour paper expiring. What does that oh. What does that mean? <laughs> oh, okay. Well, uh, you will be surprised, but I was surprised that it does happen. So what normally happens with watercolour, if it's a fresh batch of paper, uh, the moment you put water or paint on it, it kind of floats on the top. And then it gives you a bit of time to absorb before it hits the bottom. Now, when your paper is expired, um, the moment the paint hits the, the paper, it just goes down immediately. So no way for you to blend. It's like working with, with uh, bond paper, uh, you know, your ordinary uh, typewriting paper. So it, it, it lost that uh, characteristic to be able to manipulate water and watercolor paint. So that's what happens okay yeah. okay perfect and um so and also somebody said oh wow clear gesso looking forward to that so that's that's yeah. really good yeah. um yes <laughs> thank you right back with you again so this is i i am I'm, I'm not sure if some of you remember this was a class we did with with uh, john before in our in shop key party and it was a watercolor piece previously okay so when we were doing the class uh, I wasn't too happy with it. I wanted to do some more, but I, I thought, um, why not try to experiment with it? So what I did with the existing watercolor painting was that I applied a coat of this clear texture gesso. So by using clear gesso, I don't cover the existing painting, but I'm able to put a surface on top of it that has just the right amount of grit for soft pastels. And then I applied soft pastels with it. So now I'm happy. Okay, so so these are these are uh, this is one thing that you can do with your existing watercolor paintings. If in case you're not happy with it, if you want to modify it or enhance it a bit, and it's overworked, 
um, because the watercolor is transparent, so you cannot go over it with transparent watercolors as well. So if there's a need for you to do that, this is an approach that you can do. So you can coat it with clear texture gesso, and then uh, as soon as it dries, then you can go over it with pastels. Now, I also tried working with um, paper that is smooth. So if you're familiar with hot pressed paper, I tried using that as well. And before I painted on it, before I did anything at all with it, I first coated it with this clear gesso. So when you coat it with the clear gesso, it gives you already that, that grit that you need. And the nice thing is because um, uh, it's, it's uh, clear, you can still see the, the color of the uh, paper underneath, the watercolor. And the, you can see how the watercolor will blend on the paper itself. So it's like going through the gesso, going right to the watercolor and still being able to blend it the way you would your watercolor and then be able to still work on top of it with soft pastels. So it's really very interesting. The, um, the past Trina's <laughs> asked, will the clear gesso disturb the watercolor paint on the paper? Okay, I, that, uh. that's actually, <laughs> I'm going to explain to you now. Okay, okay. so um, here, okay. So I'll just grab this, Oops. all right. So I have two samples here. Oops, I can't get it in the camera. Okay. Going back to that, okay. So I'll show you this one. Okay, this one is a cold pressed paper that before I painted on it, I applied clear textured gesso. Now you will notice that there are areas where the paint just gets stuck, okay? So maybe these are the areas that um, maybe I, I put too much because I just use a brush. So yes, it does, uh, it does affect the flow of the watercolor, but only to a certain degree. And anyway, it's not gonna be a problem because you'll still be able to go over it with soft pastel. So if there's any problems like that, you'll be able to cover that up. But the nice thing with it is that it also gives you nice texture like that, see? Uh, because of the texture, because of the clear texture gesso, you're able to see granulation like that, even with just ordinary watercolor. Normally, you achieve this with granulating paints, but because um, I had that clear texture gesso, it pulled on those areas and gave me that nice texture. Now, this one is a, a watercolor sheet with no clear gesso, so you can see the difference. Okay, so it goes down very smooth as it would on watercolor sheets, and then it gives you that extra grit when you do your watercolor on a sheet that has been primed with clear texture gesso. But I have to warn you, of course, because a clear texture gesso, it has texture. So just be careful with the brushes that you use. Uh, try to use synthetics, not your really expensive brushes because it will, uh, it, you know, in, in, in the long run, it will damage the fiber because of that of the, the grit that you will have on your paper. So quickly, um, so much to to cover for for this hour. <laughs> we love we love putting you under this pressure. <laughs> I love. I, I just keep looking at the time. So just so that you know how to apply it, because you know I was also wondering how I would apply it. Um, what I would do is I would just mist the paper. Okay. Others would mix the water with the gesso, but I, I prefer not to do that so that I have a good uh, consistency that I can really control. And then from there, so it's already moist, and then I just put a bit of that. Okay. And then just make sure you have a bucket of water ready or just make sure that you clean your brush right after because the gesso will stick to the fiber. And then you just spread that, okay? So I do it one direction first and then other direction like that. Um, for me, one coat is enough. One coat of, of the clear texture gesso is enough. So you will have that on your brush. So make sure that you rinse that immediately so as not to ruin your brush. Now this one will dry in, let's say about 30 minutes and it's ready to go. You, you'll, you'll be able to work with this immediately. So you can do your watercolor, and then after that, you can do your pastels. Okay, so basically that's it. Now the pastel ground, this is a, so you can see, I think you can see the color from there. So it's not white, 
So when it dries, it does have that, that color. So you can still use this with watercolor sheets. However, you just have to be aware that you will lose that white color for the paper. Um, so if you do that, you might as well really cover everything with pastel or watercolor. Just don't leave any of those white spots because uh, it will dry uh, gray and not white. Okay, so is there any other questions for the mediums? Yes, so use? Beth has said, so if the watercolor painting is used, we'll mist it up first of all the paper and then put the gesso on. Yes, so just be careful with it. Um, um, you have to, well, hopefully everybody's using, of course, uh, good quality paints, you know, something that uh, uh, wouldn't quickly run, you know, or wouldn't fade what, what the moment you hit it with water. But so far with, with, with what I've done, uh, this was the example I showed you earlier. So this was, uh, I fully misted it with water and then coated it and, and the painting was still intact. It was okay. Just be very gentle with it. So, you know, just a light hand, a light hand. Okay, perfect, perfect. So is now a good opportunity? Was there any other techniques that you wanted to cover at this point, Iris? Or shall we take this opportunity to go into the halfway stage? Yeah, maybe, yes, sure. Yeah, okay, perfect, we'll do that. So hopefully that's been, it's a little slightly different uh, format to the classes and been started with a really educational uh, first half uh, to talk about the different applications of those two mediums. So hopefully you found that really interesting and useful. Now, Iris pulled out an example of one of the paintings that we did in a previous workshop, but she's also got some other examples of her work um, that it's always nice to have a little bit of a nosy <laughs> just to see uh, some of the other uh, paintings. So um, Iris, what have you what have you pulled out as some examples that you can uh, share with us? I have this. OK, as you can see, oh, uh, this nice. is what color. And then I didn't do anything on top of it. I didn't put any prime on it. Now, the nice thing with it is because the paper was, I think was perfect for this for this uh, technique. It's it's Hannibal Turner. So so the paper, paper is Hannibal Turner and it has just uh, that velvety tooth to it. So it's not too rough, not too smooth. And you know, the, the gaps between is just, it's, it's fine enough. It's not, you know, it's not like, the other type of rough paper. So I think it was perfect for this for this type of work. So everything that you see at the background, these are all watercolor. And um, I didn't sketch with it. The, okay, how do I how do I explain it? Um, I think when you uh, when you try to get out of the the pressure of having to create pure watercolor or pure oil or pure soft pastel, because there's always that pressure, especially if you're doing an exhibit, if you're joining competition, it has to be pure um, you have to stick to just one medium but when you do things like this you know when you mix mediums you get to uh, explore you get to find new ways to use uh, both the watercolor and the soft pastel and you actually come up with new techniques and I think that's very important in, in the growth growth of, of, of each artist so um, when I was doing this I, you know I didn't have a plan in mind I just uh, put all the water watercolors that I wanted I just wanted to see some granulation and all because I knew that I can still manipulate the image with another medium so you know that's that's the perk that you get that's the thing that you get to enjoy when when you try to step out of that pressure that you know it has to be pure watercolor um, but of course this is not uh, my approach totally you know when I do uh, works of course i i still stick to pure transparent watercolor and i still stick to pure pastels but every now and then it's nice to mix things up a bit and just you know have fun with with creating and then so again all of those things are just watercolor at the back and the mark making was done with with watercolor so i also did um underpainting and a negative painting and all and then after that wherever i needed more volume or wherever i needed more light or more color then that's where the soft pastels would come in. Now I can't quite see, but on the goldfish, it's probably not a goldfish. I don't know what type no. of fish it is, but have you actually used a bit of gold leaf there? It looks quite sparkly, no. but no, no okay. No. Oh, it looks like it, <laughs> it looks like it from yes. this distance. Okay, no, that's lovely, that's lovely. Um, and so have you got a, another another painting as well? Yeah, how, sure. I don't know how many you've pulled out. Uh, okay, this one is another approach. If you're if you're familiar with the uh, UART sanded paper, okay, UART sanded paper is uh, it's colored uh, 
sand. You know, it's like beige, a light beige. So it's not totally white. And it's not watercolor paper, it's uh, it's sanded paper. But I did the underpainting of this with watercolors. So everything, um, it, it's a nice way to not only save up on your, on your pastels, but it's a nice way to get your composition down because with watercolor, it's, it can be, you can do it very fast. And in fact, it's a fast medium. You have to work on it really fast. So when you do the, the underpainting with it, when you do the mark makings and you fix the composition with the watercolor, they immediately see that, okay, it, it, will, it seems to be look like a good uh, composition. And then from there, you just build it up. So that's how I did it. So again, this is a UART sanded paper. And then underpainting with watercolor, I let it dry. And then I went on top of it with, with soft pastels. So a lot of the areas here, that's uh, right on, on the underpaintings here that you see, those are watercolors. So I didn't have to go over that anymore with pastel. So it saved on the pastels and it saved time as well. And it helped me with the planning part because I already know exactly how it's gonna look like. I just need to add more colors to make it more vibrant. Yeah. And then finally, this one is the class we will be doing. Uh, well, hang on a minute. You're jumping the gun oh. now. We'll come to that in a minute. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Couldn't resist. Couldn't resist. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. We'll come to that in a minute. I, I've got okay. to save that to the end. That's the All final right. reveal. The final reveal. Um, well, they they look they look really lovely. And uh, if if you want to in the chat. Exp give us some feedback on which one you prefer that would be really great mm -hmm. also if you're watching this on youtube and love the art you've seen on display today we'd really appreciate it if you could just hit the thumbs up uh, youtube then recommends this show to more people helping us with our mission to inspire more people to give art a try young and old alike so i'll be very thankful thank you um so now let's go back to iris uh who is very eager to talk about the workshop in a couple of weeks though um uh, and we'll discuss what she's going to be covering it's more in depth obviously and and enhancing some of the things we're talking about today it's going to be another multimedia session with watercolour and pastel. And this one is called, if you haven't already guessed uh, from the reveal, Rocky Rivers. And she's obviously going to be walking through step by step. And it's my job over those two to three hours to make sure we go at the right pace so that we keep pace with everybody that's taking part in that show and make sure we can all finish uh, together. So now's your chance, Iris, where you can <laughs> show us the uh, painting. There we go. And so this, this is a mixture of both water to color and pastel i think isn't it yes yes sorry about that no John. no that's okay that's okay <laughs> next time next time we have to practice the whole spiel <laughs> yeah yeah i know i know i know um right so to, i mean this looks a lovely scene and actually we've included we'll, we'll send out the photo the photo reference as well because you've done it from a from a photo and um it's oh it looks lovely especially since i'm so hot at the moment just looking at this <laughs> waterfall and it just looks very peaceful and lovely so um so yes is, is this something did you only recently do this or is this some one of your favorite spots or how is there a story behind it or well yes actually because um i i do belong to a uh, uh an art group here in uh we're doing soft pastels so every month we have a challenge and because of the pandemic you know everybody's indoors you don't get to go out so we were saying okay how about Let's paint uh, something that that we miss the outdoors. So we got some photos uh, from our from our members. So we all painted, and um, but this is a different. So I, I I have a photo from a friend who allowed me to use his his photo, and I used that for for this painting. So yeah, because you know we miss going out so much, and I think everybody does so too. So I thought maybe why not paint something like this instead of my usual subject, which is still life, because normally it's, it's still life that I do. And this one is on watercolor sheet. This is actually arches. It's arches cold press and I use the smoother side because there's there's two sides. One is a bit rough and the other side is a more smooth. So I use that and that's where I use the pastel ground. This is what I was okay. talking to you about. Okay. Yeah. And will mm -hmm. people need to have, have got something like pastel ground for this workshop? No, not necessary. Uh, as long as you have a, 
uh, watercolor sheet that you're happy with. That's actually the reason why I, I the demo that I'm doing now is just on pure watercolor, so that they can see that it, it yeah it can it will work even with just uh, re regular watercolor. So it would really depend on how uh, gritty you want it to be on the texture that you want. It's for me um, if just for those who will be starting with the technique, I, I suggest that they just use watercolor sheets first. And um, if they like it, then they can start progressing out, uh, by adding these mediums. Okay, 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 that makes sense. So mm -hmm. if you want to join Iris and I for this event, it's taking place on Thursday, the 5th of August, so in a couple of weeks time, and it's going to be at 9am in the morning UK time, much that Iris would have loved to have started at this time at two o'clock because it's three hours, it would be <laughs> the middle of the night for her. Um, but obviously, depending on your time zone, if you can't make the live event because of the time, you have the option of purchasing the video should you want. Um, now you can either book by clicking the link just here or um, I'll share my screen and show you how easy it is to find on our website. As a patron, we've also got a special 10% discount you can use for a limited period as well. So you head over to uh, shopkeeparty.com and you click on the live events section at the top and then you scroll down and just out of interest, just here, we're supporting a school in Kenya. We're arting them up we're giving them art materials and everything and if you want to help us support us the link's there and you can read all about it so there's iris's workshop and you click the see details button and you come through to her page and if you scroll down you'll see the reference photo that um she was been talking about and there's there's the actual photo and then a list of the materials and then if you scroll back up there's a link where you can book your webinar ticket or pre-order the video. And if you're a patron, you can click that and you get 10% off. So if we click on the main link, go through to Iris's shop. And just here is where you can book the webinar ticket. And you have two options. You can either book the live webinar ticket or you can book the ticket and the video uh, together. And that's at a discounted price from if you just purchase the video itself. Then you go to checkout, it adds it to basket, and uh, we, depending on what currency you have in your country, um, your card or bank issuer will convert it to your currency at that point. If you have ordered the video or you order the video in the future, um, and if you do want to purchase it, here's an example of a workshop we did yesterday, you can just click the purchase button and then we unlock it for you and then you can press watch and you can watch it and it'll always be there. Iris's video will, workshop will always be there. You can watch it then on any device and keep coming back if you want to then watch that um, on, on smart TVs, computers, mobile phones, and then you can just put, pop that in front of you and go through the workshop. So hopefully that has been helpful. Uh, also, if you remember that one of the many perks of being a patron is that if you're level two or up, um, you get the workshop video unlocked for free when you purchase a workshop place. In fact, while we're on the subject of our patrons, I want to welcome our newest members to uh, the community. And so if I just press the button of thanks behind me, there we go. So uh, I want to say welcome and thank you to Jacqueline Cox, Susan Porter, Mary Jane Cooley, Joan, Carol Clark, and Barb Carragher. So thank you so much for your support. And next week we're unlocking two amazing full length, two to three hour workshop recordings, both focused actually on developing your pastel techniques uh, and both exclusively for our patrons. So if you were to buy these, they'd cost you 39 pounds each, but as a patron for as little as five pounds a month, you can watch them for free. So um, let's get on now and rejoin Iris, if you're watching on YouTube, the rest of this tutorial will now speed up and you might listen to a little bit of music as well. Like all the other special shows we do, the full recording can only be accessed by our patrons from our video library. I trust you've nonetheless been inspired by what you've seen and I hope that we'll see you at one of our upcoming live events in real time next time. So thanks very much.
So they have white color spectrum. And the thing with that is that it's a, a ground that's laid over watercolor paper. So it's practically what we're doing now. And you oh, can buy it ready. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. Great. So uh, slightly more unusual uh, class, not quite your conventional paint along from start to finish today, but I really hope that it's been educational for you. I, I certainly have uh, learned a lot. And in actual fact, uh, Norma's just written. Thank you so much, Iris. Beautifully explained. I've never been interested in using pastels until your explanation and description <laughs> just now. So really looking forward to trying it out. So there we go. Mission accomplished with what, at least one of you. So that's good. And <laughs> For those of you that were painting along or intend to finish what you were doing today, really, really looking forward to seeing what you can achieve. By the way, as we near the end of the show, if you've got any words of thanks that you'd like me to pass on to Iris, uh, please do write that down in the Q&A now and I'll come back to her uh, in a few minutes and read those to her. And as I said, we've created a post for this class on Facebook. And uh, so if you go and search for that, uh, Shopkeep Arty on Facebook and post your picture on there. And if you do share a photo of what you created, you might get a comment from Iris. Uh, also, take a look at how others have, have done and give them a like or send them a positive comment. It's nice to encourage people's creativity. That's what we're all about. So this brings us to the end of another really great show. It's been fascinating. We've had quite a, we did a, a workshop with Robert Dutton yesterday as well, uh, all with soft pastel and did a really uh, amazing quintessential English scenes that was really nice and we've had the the watercolor and pastel mix today as well so it's been really fascinating and if you do want to join Iris and I for the full workshop remember to visit our live events section on our website and if you're one of our patrons you can take advantage of our 10% off link for a limited period of time. I'll now go back to Iris and I'll read some of the comments that we've had about this class. I can see that Iris is already still tinkering. We'll, we'll try and finish the, the painting. Um, it's been great. Thank you from Cherry. Um, Victoria, thanks Iris. You are an excellent teacher. Uh, Hanre, amazing eye-opening demo. Thank you Iris. Han that's from Hanadi. Uh, Kim, thank you Iris. Really interesting. Judith, Thanks, Iris. Your lighter touch is an inspiration. Thank you very much. Um, Trina, what a great introduction into mixing pastel and watercolour. I have pastels and pastel pencils and even clear gesso and pastel ground and will give these all a go. Iris is always so clear and generous with her presentation and knowledge. Many thanks, Iris. Um, Barb, excellent explanation of all the techniques. Thank you, Iris and John. Diana, superb class, Iris. You're an, you are amazing to be able to so clearly explain your technique and thought process while you work. That is very difficult. You're an excellent instructor. Thank you for introducing me to a new concept of using pastels and watercolour together. Kudos. Uh, Mary Jane, thanks. New ideas and inspiration. Marinella, thank you. Thank you, teacher Iris. Um, Carol, uh, thanks, Iris. That's been really interesting and different. Thank you, John. Have a good holiday. Thank you, Carol. Uh, Angie, thank you, Iris, for this demo. Very clear explanation. Suzanne, thank you. We'll definitely give it a go. And then Sandra Markovic, very lovely. So, Thank you, everyone. That was uh, a really great class. We'll obviously come back to Iris's picture at the end. If you're joining me in Minnesota for the live class, workshop class with David R. Smith, I'll see you there in about 30 minutes. Otherwise, the SKA team are taking a break next week, as uh, somebody mentioned a moment ago, So after a very busy six months since Christmas. Uh, but I hope you enjoy the pastel special workshops that we're releasing next week for you, our patrons. So uh, enjoy those. Until next time, it's goodbye from me. But obviously, thank you so much for you. your generosity, all your tips and tricks, and just being just overall good fun. Thank you to Iris. Thank you, Iris. Oh, I will show them that. Don't worry. I know. I know. I will. I'll show it. I'll show it. Um, I first of all got to give you a round of applause. <laughs> and we'll finish on the painting. Thanks, Iris. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you. Could you bring the camera a bit closer up? Oh. Thank you so much. Bye, okay. everyone. Bye. Bye.